Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about memory hierarchy in computer architecture course, computer organization course, computer organization and architecture course. Memory unit is an essential component in any digital computer system since it is needed for storing both programs and data. This figure 1 illustrates the typical components in a memory hierarchy. At the bottom of the memory hierarchy, the auxiliary memory is available. The auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory. Devices that provide backup storage can be called as auxiliary memory. The most commonly used auxiliary memory devices in the computer system are magnetic tapes and magnetic disk. These magnetic tapes and magnetic disks can be called as auxiliary memory devices or are secondary memory devices. Magnetic tape is used for storing removable files. Whatever the files that we are deleted from the computer system, that files are stored in the magnetic tape. Magnetic disk is used for backup storage. Okay, so auxiliary memory is mainly used for storing large data files, system programs and backup storage information. So that information is available in the auxiliary memory. Auxiliary memory has a large storage capacity. Auxiliary memory is relatively inexpensive and auxiliary memory has a low access speed. Okay, next. Next one is main memory. Memory unit that communicates directly with the CPU can be called as main memory. Okay, memory unit that communicates directly with the CPU can be called as main memory. Main memory occupies a central position in the memory hierarchy by being able to communicate with the CPU directly. Main memory is used for storing both programs and data that are needed by the CPU. Programs and data that are needed, that are not needed by the CPU, that programs and data are transferred to auxiliary memory. Okay. Only programs and data that are needed by the CPU is stored in the main memory. The programs and data that are not needed by the CPU, so that programs and data are transferred to the auxiliary memory. Whenever it, they are required, they can be transferred from auxiliary memory to the main memory through I.O. processor. I.O. processor is nothing but input-output processor. So, I.O. processor manages the data transfer between auxiliary memory and main memory. Okay. To transfer the data from auxiliary memory to the main memory, we require input-output processor. That is nothing but I.O. processor. So, I.O. processor manages the data transfer between auxiliary memory and main memory. Suppose CPU wants to execute a particular program. That program is not 
reside in the main memory so that program is reside in the auxiliary memory so to execute that program so whatever the program that are stored in the auxiliary memory that can be transferred to the main memory through the IO processor okay so CPU wants to use a particular program over our data that data is not available in the main memory that data and the program can be taken from the auxiliary memory so through the IO processor next one is catch memory so catch memory is located in between the CPU and main memory okay catch organization is concerned with the transfer of information between main memory and CPU CPU want CPU wants to access a particular program and data first it checks the catch memory if it is available in the catch memory, it can be accessed from the catch memory. If it is not available in the catch memory, it can be taken from the main memory. If it is available in the main memory, it can be accessed from the main memory through the catch memory. If it is not available in the main memory, it can be taken from the auxiliary memory okay the part of the computer system that supervises the flow of information between auxiliary memory and main memory can be called as memory management system okay what is the use of memory management system so memory management system is the part of the computer system that supervises the flow of information between auxiliary memory and main memory. In the memory management system, one of the hardware component we have to use can be called as IO processor that is input output processor. By using that input output processor, we are transferring the information between auxiliary memory and main memory. Next one. There are four levels of memory hierarchy. In the first level, so CPU registers are available. So CPU registers are there are stored in the CPU. In the second level of memory hierarchy, catch memory is available. In the third level of memory hierarchy, main memory is available. In the fourth level of memory hierarchy, auxiliary memory is available. Okay, first level CPU registers. In the second level, catch memory. In the third level, main memory. In the fourth level, auxiliary memory. Why we are dividing the memory into three or four levels? So the reason for dividing the memory into three or four levels of memory hierarchy is economics. Okay. Economics is nothing but money. Okay. Next one. So these are the four levels of memory hierarchy. In the first level, CPU registers are there. Registers are temporary storage devices. They are used for storing the operand data as well as used for storing the intermediate results. Next, in the next level catch memory is available catch memory is used for storing the frequently used programs and data in the next level main memory 
main memory is used for storing the programs and data in the next level auxiliary memory is available auxiliary memory contains magnetic tape and magnetic disk they are used for storing large data files system programs and backup storage okay so auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory okay next what is the goal of memory hierarchy the main goal of memory hierarchy is to obtain highest possible average access speed while minimizing the cost of the entire memory system okay we are reducing the cost of the memory at the same time we are increasing the access speed okay the main goal of memory hierarchy is to increase the access speed by reducing the cost of the memory system okay. suppose cpu wants to access a particular program or a data first it checks the cache memory if it is available in the cache memory then it can be called as hit it can be accessed from the cache memory if it is not available in the cache memory so it can be accessed from the main memory then it can be called as miss if it is available in the main memory it can be accessed from the main memory through the catch memory if it is not available in the main memory it can be accessed from the auxiliary memory okay now it can be accessed from the auxiliary memory through the input output processor now whatever the programs and the data that are required by the cpu that are available in the auxiliary memory that can be brought into the main memory by using input output processor from the main memory it can be passes to the catch memory from the catch memory it can be passes to the cpu now cpu can execute the programs and the data next one the part of the computer system that supervises the flow of information from auxiliary memory to main memory can be called as memory management system in the memory management system one of the hardware component we have to use that can be called as input output processor it can also be called as io processor io processor manages the data transfer between auxiliary memory and main memory next one one of the important uh, concept in memory hierarchy is multi programming what is multi programming so multi programming is nothing but multiple number of programs that can be executed at the same time many operating systems are designed to enable the cpu to process a number of independent programs concurrently this concept can be called as multi programming next one what is the goal of the memory hierarchy the main goal of memory hierarchy is to obtain a highest possible average access speed while minimizing the cost of the entire memory system that is nothing but improving the speed improving the highest possible speed while minimizing the cost of the memory system improving the speed 
by reducing the cost of the memory system. This is the main goal of memory hierarchy. Next one is another important factor that we have to consider in memory hierarchy is storage capacity. Storage capacity is nothing but how much amount of memory that is required for storing information, how it can be measured. So, CPU registers, the storage capacity can be measured in CPU registers in terms of bytes. The storage capacity in cache memory can be measured in terms of kilobytes or a megabytes. The storage capacity of main memory can be measured in terms of gigabytes. The storage capacity in magnetic tape and magnetic disk can be measured in terms of terabytes and petabytes. Okay, while, while moving from top to bottom, the storage capacity is always increases. Whenever the storage capacity is increases from top to bottom in the memory hierarchy, the cost per bit for storing binary information is always decreases. Okay, whenever the cost per bit for storing binary information is decreases, the access time is always also become access time of memory always becomes longer okay from top to bottom storage capacity is increases cost per bit for storing binary information is also decreases and the access time also becomes longer so first one is access time Second one is storage capacity. Third one is cost. These three important factors we have to consider. So while moving from top to bottom, the access time is always longer. While moving from top to bottom, storage capacity is always increases. While moving from top to bottom, the cost per bit for storing binary information is always decreases. So, which level has the highest access time? So, highest access time, auxiliary memory storage devices has the highest access time. Which device has the lowest access time? CPU registers has the lowest access time. Next, which devices has the highest storage capacity? Auxiliary memory devices has the highest storage capacity. Which level has the lowest storage capacity? CPU registers has the lowest storage capacity. Which devices has the highest cost? So, CPU registers has the highest cost when compared to the auxiliary memory devices. Okay, so these three important factors we have to consider. Access time always longer from top to bottom. Storage capacity is always increases from top to bottom and the cost is always decreases from top to bottom in the memory hierarchy. So, this is the description about memory hierarchy in computer system. Both diagrams are important while they are asking the memory hierarchy. I hope all of you understanding this video. If you really understanding this video, if you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will try to clarify your doubts. If you really like understanding this video, please click on the like button 
and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you really understanding this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel Divella Srinivas Rao. After subscribing my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. For better understanding of computer architecture course, go to this channel and go to the playlist called Computer Organization over our Computer Architecture. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.